Hello, my name is John Scretney, and I am co-director of the Center for Comparative Immigration Studies here at University of California, San Diego. We're pleased to welcome today Professor Mary Waters of Harvard University. Um, Mary is the uh, John L. Loeb Professor of Sociology at Harvard, and we invited her here today because Mary was recently the chair of a very important panel at the National Academy of Sciences that recently issued a, a report that has received a wide amount of attention, the integration of immigrants into American society. We brought Mary here to campus in order to ask her some questions about this report, understand where it came from, what, what its findings were, and what the implications of those findings will be. So Mary, let's start really with, with the origins of this report. Um, what, was the, what was the motivation? Why did the National Academies decide that immigration and specifically the integration of immigrants was an important thing that the nation needed to know about? So the National Academy of Sciences is an independent organization that gives scientific advice to Congress and all of the um, agencies of the government. So if they want to know the answer to any scientific question, they ask the National Academy of Sciences to do a, a study of it. And so if they want to know, for instance, if um, uh, vaccines cause autism, which they don't, uh, they asked the National Academy of Sciences to do a study. So the, um, the, the bureau that handles citizenship and people becoming citizens was concerned that um, the rate of citizenship was low. So they wanted to know why immigrants were not becoming citizens. And since there had been a long time since the National Academy of Sciences had looked at how immigrants were integrating into American society, uh, a, a number of different government agencies came together and asked the National Academy to do a wide-ranging report on how all immigrants are becoming Americans and how that process is going. Okay, so this report it covers a wide amount of ground, it, after nearly 500 pages. There's a lot of depth to it uh, as well. Um, I wanted to get your sense, um, as, as the leader of the, of the committee, um, and as a longtime scholar in immigration and race and ethnicity and inequality, what were some of the key findings uh, in, in your view? What, what really stood out? What are some of the things that you think the American people should know? Right, so uh, we labored for two years to, to understand how immigrants were integrating. And this is a really important question because one out of four Americans, 25%, are either immigrants or the children of immigrants. So how they become Americans is important to all of us and to the future of our society that we are successfully integrating them. And there was a lot of concern that perhaps because immigrants are uh, primarily um, non-white, that immigrants are uh, have low levels of education, some immigrants do, that perhaps they were not integrating as quickly as uh, European immigrants did 100 years ago. And so that was the concern uh, going into it. And the major finding of this research was across every area that we looked, uh, we found that immigrants were integrating. We defined integration as um, immigrants coming to resemble the native born. And that's a two-way process. So immigrants change because they come here and they um, adapt to ways in America. But native born Americans change because immigrants come. We start eating more burritos and <laughs> less ketchup, et cetera. So this two-way process, though, is just as strong, in fact, stronger than it was 100 years ago for European immigrants. So we measured um, socioeconomic progress. We measured health integration. We measured we measured attitudes, we measure, measured intermarriage, we looked at um, uh, naturalization, voting, citizenship, uh, uh, linguistic assimilation. Across all of these different measures, we found that the longer immigrants are here, the more like Americans they become. And across generations, the children of immigrants begin to converge with native-born Americans. So I think a lot of the findings of this report were surprising, I think counterintuitive to a lot of people in the United States. Tell us a little bit about some of those. Um, like for example, health. Uh, we tend to think of Americans as, you know, we're, we're living in this, the wealthiest country on the planet, we're the healthiest, we're the healthiest people on the planet, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. How do the immigrants look in, in, on, their, on measures of health compared to Americans? Right, so, so we actually measured two different things when we're looking at how immigrants change and native-born change. One was integration, how do you become like other Americans? And the other was well-being. Are you better off because you come to America? Mm -hmm. Are the immigrants and their children better off? And in general, 
they are better off. Um, the longer you're here and into the second generation, the higher your education, the higher your income, the better your job is, those kinds of things. Uh, People are learning English relatively quickly, faster than Italians and Polish people did 100 years ago. But there were three areas in which becoming American was not good for your well-being. And health is one of those examples. So immigrants tend to be much healthier than Americans. They uh, have a longer life expectancy. They have better health behaviors. They're less likely to be obese. They're, more like, they're less likely to drink and do drugs. Um, they have better health behaviors over time. What happens is the longer they're here, the more they become like us. They start to eat worse. They start to drink. They start to do various things that make them unhealthy so that by the second and especially the third generation, uh, they look just like other Americans. How about, how about crime? There's a lot of controversy and a lot of debate about immigrants and the relationship of immigrants to crime. What kind of things did you find uh, on that topic? Yes, crime was the other area in which immigrants are much better off than native-born Americans. So immigrants commit crime at about um, at, at much lower rates than native-born Americans. Um, they uh, are incarcerated at uh, one-fourth the rate of um, uh, native-born Americans. They, uh, cities that have a lot of immigrants have seen their crime rates go down. Uh, areas, even with a lot of undocumented immigrants, uh, have less crime than areas where there are fewer immigrants. So from every uh, statistic we were able to find and look at, immigrants are much less likely to commit crime, which is exactly the opposite than most Americans think. What happens is by the second generation, crime rates go up some, and it isn't until the third generation that um, immigrants begin to resemble native-born Americans in terms of their crime. Interesting. So uh, the big story here, the, the big headline is immigrants are integrating, mm -hmm. and they're integrating rapidly, and there's, there's, there's no truth to the idea that, that there's, that there's that immigrants today are not integrating like immigrants in previous generations. But at the same time, you did find there were some obstacles to mm -hmm. integration. Can you tell us a little bit about those? What, what were some of the obstacles that, that struck you as especially concerning? Right, so we, we identified three areas of concern within this wider uh, kind of good news. And the three areas were first, uh, race patterns. So the US is a very highly stratified racialized societies where uh, whites generally have better socioeconomic outcomes than non-whites. And that is true for immigrants as well. So that, um, for instance, black immigrants are um, integrating uh, at a slower rate than other immigrants, and uh, especially than white and Asian immigrants. Uh, Latinos are somewhere in the middle. and. Um, uh, there were some troubling patterns, for instance, for black immigrants, uh, poverty rates, instead of going down for the second generation, went up slightly. Uh, for Latinos, uh, this uh, uh, goes to the second area of concern, which is legal status. So uh, um, uh, Latinos are overrepresented among uh, the undocumented, and we actually have a, pa a, a policy of non-integration for undocumented people. Uh, it's kind of a failing policy because people do come here, they live uh, among um, Americans, they work, they send their children to school, they buy houses, they go to church, but at the same time they're blocked from fully integrating. And so legal status is uh, something which uh, affects integration. And uh, we all know that our immigration policy is um, in need of, of revision. It, our study was very scientific, it was not political, so we didn't have a position on legalization, but we did show that legal status was having negative effects on integrating immigrants, and it was having negative effects on the children of immigrants. Um, at, many of whom there's uh, 5.2 million children who have an undocumented parent, and 4.5 million of those are citizen children themselves. So the negative effects of having an undocumented parent, uh, for instance, uh, higher rates of um, emotional problems, uh, probably from the fear of deportation, uh, lower educational attainment, 
all of those are things that are affecting citizen American children because of our failed immigration policy. Right. As you know from the famous poem on the Statue of Liberty, there's a framing of immigrants in the United States and throughout our history as, as poor people, the huddled masses. Uh, what did you find, uh, what did the team, the research team find regarding immigration, integration, and, and poverty? Right, so immigrants come to the United States primarily to work and to make a better life for themselves. And a lot of immigrants come with very low levels of education, but they have very high labor force participation rates. So they're working very hard either in the formal or the informal economy. And yet they have high rates of poverty. So immigrants in the first generation have much higher poverty rates than the native born, but they also have much higher labor force participation rates. And basically, when you talk about the working poor in America, they are immigrants. The good news is that over time, uh, their poverty rates declined. So by the second generation, uh, the poverty rate is, is much lower for the, um, for the second generation compared to the first. And then by the third generation, they actually have lower poverty rates than the native born. This National Academies report, it's the National Academy of Sciences. And as you said, it's a scientific a study and the, and the tone throughout is really pretty neutral. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I couldn't help but think that there's, it reads a little bit like a report card. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, um, I wondered about, you know, should immigrants be integrating? Should we be cheering on these results? Is this, is this good for us as Americans? Is it good for the immigrants as, as newcomers? What's your view on that? Well, uh, you're right. As, um, uh, it's a very rigorous process to write one of these reports. It goes through many layers of uh, checking and experts checking that everything that we're doing is, is scientifically correct, and we're not taking a political position. Uh, speaking personally, um, I think that uh, the fact that um, one out of four Americans are immigrants or the children of immigrants uh, means that it's really important that we are all um, uh, uh, in this society together, that we are um, very much sharing our fate, sharing our future together, that immigrant children have the same uh, opportunities for advancement as native-born um, Americans. We have a long history in our society um, of successfully integrating immigrants. And I think that's uh, widely recognized in American society. And we, we begin the report by talking about the overrepresentation of immigrants as Nobel Prize winners, as, as really successful people in American society. And I think uh, we as Americans generally celebrate our, our success in the past. And I think given the report card that we have, we can celebrate our success in the future of integrating immigrants with these, these caveats about uh, race and about legal status. I have to ask, just because we're using the language of report card, what mm -hmm. grade would you, would you give? You know, in almost um, uh, every area in terms of integration, I would give us uh, 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 an A, probably. Um, there's one area, and it was the area that we were asked to look at, which is uh, citizenship, becoming a citizen, and voting behavior. And that was the area where I think I would give us a C. Mm -hmm. So only 50% of immigrants who are, are eligible to naturalize, which means you've come in legally, you've been here for five years, you can take the citizenship test and become a citizen. And only 50% of, of people who are eligible do become citizens. And we tried very hard to answer the question as to why. That's much, much lower than, say, Canada or, or Australia or even many European countries that don't have as great a history of um, integrating immigrants as we do. And it's much lower than historically uh, we, we were. And we couldn't really answer the question. Um, we do know, if we look comparatively, for instance, Canada will send you a notice when you're eligible. Mm to naturalize. The US doesn't do that. We don't let people know, oh, okay, you've been here long enough, 
come on down and take the citizenship test. So little things like that might make a difference. Historically, unions and uh, political parties really worked hard to naturalize people, and now we don't have as much of that kind of on the ground naturalization uh, happening. Uh, so that could be one of the reasons why people don't, but. Okay. You know we talked a little bit about the politics of immigration. It's January 2017. Mm -hmm. We just had an election where immigration was a major part of the of the of the campaign. Um, how do you think the report's findings uh, shed light on some of the controversies that we saw in the campaign between um, Trump and and Clinton? Yeah. Uh, in fact, John, I wish that the report um, had been. Um, uh, influential in, mm -hmm. in the debate because the parts of the debate actually don't reflect reality. So for instance, um, the number of undocumented people in the US has actually gone down from its peak, which was right before Obama took office. Mm -hmm. So since 2008, the number of undocumented people in the US has actually declined um, and the net undocumented immigration has been negative. And immigration from Mexico has been um, net of, of about zero. Uh, so since um, since 2008, uh, the number has declined to 11.3 million. So uh, while the debate was all about getting control of our border, we do have control mm -hmm. of our border. So that was um, disappointing to us. Uh, also, um, some of the debate uh, in the election was about immigrants and crime. And as I had mentioned, uh, all of the statistics show that immigrants commit crimes less than native-born Americans. Uh, I do think, though, if you look at attitudes about immigrants and attitudes towards our immigration policy, that most Americans are pretty positive towards immigrants. So a lot of our political debates uh, don't match not only the reality of immigration, but it also doesn't even match um, American citizens' ideas and attitudes towards immigrants, which are a lot more positive than you would uh, surmise just watching the TV news. Right. You know, on that point, the, the, the language of science is numbers. And a lot of the language of the report is aggregate statistics and averages. Um, you're a researcher who uses both quantitative and qualitative methods. Um, can you talk a little bit about how it's best to communicate these kinds of findings? Do the numbers, uh, are, are those persuasive? Are there ways to um, enhance the persuasiveness of those numbers with other kinds of social science data? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of using lots of different methods to answer questions. So uh, this report was really founded in what we could say scientifically and statistically about measuring all of these different um, uh, indicators of immigration integration over time. But I think it's also important to also tell the stories of immigrants and to let immigrants tell their own stories and for us to listen to uh, what is important to them and how their lives are unfolding. And I think there are a lot of skilled social scientists on UCSD campus and mm -hmm. throughout the country uh, who have been talking to immigrants and telling uh, their stories in their own words and um, and also telling the stories of of Americans and how they have um, uh, uh, seen their lives improve because immigrants have come into the society. So I think uh, it's important for those of us in this business to both uh, talk about the facts and the statistics on the ground, but also to humanize people. Because in the end, um, this is a, a story about people coming to make a better life for themselves and for their children. Right. You know, going back to the, the broad outlines of the findings, the, the major point that immigrants are integrating mm -hmm. into society in the United States. Um, I know your charge was to look at the United States, but let's, let's look globally a little bit. Mm -hmm. How does the United States look on this score, in, in the integration of immigrants compared to other, um, other places? Europe has, for example, been attracting large numbers of immigrants, societies, refugees. How do we, how do we compare to, to societies in Europe? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the, the big differences uh, between Europe and well, a couple of different big, big differences. One is that um, 
uh, Europe doesn't have the history that we have of seeing ourselves as an immigrant receiving society, which uh, is very much in our bones. And so the idea that you can be an American and be a Mexican American or a um, Nigerian American or an Italian American, that's very much how we think. And we see that as not a zero sum game. You don't give up being Italian to become American and you don't, uh, it, there's no conflict there. I think that it's much harder in some countries in, in Europe for people to both hold on to an ethnic identity and become German or French. It's just less in their DNA that they see this as a positive thing. But the other major difference now is uh, the concern about Islam in Europe. And um, uh, we looked at religious uh, backgrounds of immigrants coming in, the US, uh, has seen a growth in non-Christian and Jewish uh, immigration. So there's been a, a, a growth of um, uh, Buddhist and Hindu and Muslim immigration, but it's a very small percentage. Uh, and in fact, Muslim immigrants in the US are doing quite well and are um, uh, uh, reporting that they have experienced more discrimination since 2001, but nothing like the kind of, it, has, it hasn't become a lightning rod for division. In fact, religion um, in the US, uh, a lot of immigrants are Christian or Catholic, and they're really revitalizing a lot of the churches. So the, the split between secular and religious that happens in Europe doesn't happen as much in the US. And um, uh, we don't see the same kind of um, worry about Islam. Whether or not if uh, immigration increased um, from religions that we're not as used to, we might have more problems, I don't know, in the future. But right now, religion is not a flashpoint in the US. Right. You know, I've heard you say, and I've, I've heard it said by other scholars, that the United States doesn't really have an integration policy. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, we're successful almost in spite of ourselves. Um, if you were going to suggest a few areas where policy might help you know, improve things even more than, than the way they're going, where, where would that go? You, you mentioned naturalization, mm -hmm. you know, encouraging people to become citizens. Um, you know, what, what other areas do you think we could do a better job and maybe policymakers mm -hmm. could, could help? Right. Well, one area we could definitely do a better job in is language. So that's a concern. Many Americans are very worried that immigrants are not learning English fast enough that usually it takes a long time for people to learn a new language. And what we find is that uh, immigrants are learning English and their children are learning English uh, even more rapidly than earlier uh, European immigrants. But there still is just an incredible demand because immigrants want to learn English. So what we did find in the report is that there are long waiting lists and long um, uh, waits for people to get education in English. And in fact, the number of English classes have been cut because of funding cuts across the country. So that's one area we could definitely do a lot better in. I think we could do a lot better in just giving information to people about the availability of citizenship tests uh, and about um, how the process works. I think one of the ways uh, People are a little bit um, confused about exactly how they go about becoming uh, citizens. We could help with that. Um, and I think uh, in general, though, the US, because it has an open labor market and people can easily go to work, and because we have so many immigrants and we have a lot of institutions devoted to helping with uh, immigrant integration, uh, which are non-governmental, but a lot of churches, a lot of um, nonprofit organizations, uh, we generally do a good job of it. That's good. Now, one last question. If you, if you could identify an area where we need to know more, mm -hmm. if you were going to tell the National Academies, this is what you should focus on next, what would that be and why? Well, one of the things that we uh, we did in the, in the report was to take a view, and we were looking across the nation. But there's a lot of variation across the nation, and um, especially in terms of uh, either harsh harsh laws passed against undocumented people or welcoming laws. Um, uh, IDs, driver's license, those kinds of things. So I think more studying of 
you know, where is it good to be an immigrant? Do you want to go to California or do you want to go to Alabama? Uh, do you want to go to New York or do you want to go to Minnesota? Those kinds of questions, I think, uh, are really important to look at and to uh, understand better how local areas are dealing with immigration and how they can do better. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for coming to our campus and sharing your expertise. Oh, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you.